Good evening. My name is Beth Heidi, and I am presenting our capstone project, Building a Sustainable Bus Rapid Transit in Staten Island. Our client, the MTA, operates New York City's subways, bus systems, commuter railroads, creating approximately 2.4 billion transportation trips per year, enabling New York City to avoid 15 million tons of, uh, 15 million metric tons of carbon emissions annually. Because of this, New York is the most carbon efficient state in the country. Our transportation system is the backbone of our economy. We rely on the MTA to get to work, to school, and to access important services. For residents of Staten Island, getting to where they need to go is a challenge. Staten Island residents working off-island have some of the longest commute times in the country. According to the U.S. Census, the national average is approximately 25 minutes, and folks living on Staten Island have commuting times of 40 minutes and longer. Public transit on the island is not well coordinated. Transfers between different modes, like bus to train to ferry, are limited. Traffic is heavy, roads are narrow, and not designed for the island's growing population. As you can see, the daily commute in Staten Island is a nightmare. Take note of this bus, one of the, the few transit options in the area totally stuck in this terrible traffic jam. Because of the limited transportation options, 67% of Staten Islanders are forced to rely on personal vehicles compared to 28% of New Yorkers citywide. Multi-million dollar investments have been made into the St. George area, like the New York Ferris Wheel and Empire Outlets Mall, um, compounding traffic issues. And while transportation planners have been studying the North Shore area dating back to the 90s, no practical or unifying vision for the transportation of the North Shore has been implemented. However, the MTA does have a solution. In 2012, MTA determined that a bus rapid transit on the, um, on the, North, on the abandoned North Shore right-of-way featured there in red was the most cost-effective way to solve the previously mentioned challenges in the area and serve as a sustainable transportation option to support future growth. The route for the BRT is the 5.1 mile stretch of the defunct Staten Island Railway. It runs across the North Shore from Mariner's Harbor on the west to the St. George Ferry Terminal on the east. The right-of-way is very close to sea level and much of it is near, even in the water. Building the BRT on the right-of-way will require a range of resilient design strategies, um, which will, I will get into in a few moments. First, I want to touch on New York City's version of BRT, Select Bus Service. So New York City has SBS, which is seen here on the left. It serves as BRT, but it's missing a few of the key components, most notably the physical exclusion of cars from the bus lane and platform-level boarding, as seen in the photo of Bogota, Colombia on the right. The abandoned right-of-way in Staten Island offers the unique opportunity to provide true BRT to Staten Islands to speed up their commute. As I mentioned before, the MTA is committed to implementing this project, and we were tasked with highlighting best practices in other cities and asked to provide specific examples of how to make the BRT in Staten Island more sustainable and resilient. Our research and analysis methods included an extensive lit review, site visits to Staten Island, analysis for flooding and sea level rise risk, and inter excuse me, interviews with industry professionals. Additionally, we quantified the potential benefits of a BRT on the North Shore. In order for the MTA to fully understand the benefits and co-benefits of this project, we projected the economic benefits for reduced travel time, fewer crashes, and reduced CO2 and other pollutants. In comparison to the existing bus service in Staten Island, people could save on average 20 minutes if a BRT were implemented. The value of that time saves, saved translates to $7 per person per day. It was also estimated that 29,000 single vehicle occupancy trips could be avoided, resulting in nearly 99,000 tons of CO2 emissions reduced annually. The Institute for Transportation Development Policy has a BRT rating system. It serves as an evaluation tool for world-class bus rapid transit based on international best practices. 
We chose 10 systems, all rated either gold, silver, or bronze, created a comparative matrix to serve as a reference guide of standout BRTs. The following examples were chosen as recommendations designed to meet MTA's sustainability goals, support the 1NYC vision, and help achieve a gold-rated BRT. First, let's start with the bus. BRT buses can use a variety of propulsion systems from compressed natural gas to hybrid electric, conventional diesel, and electric. Now, improved electric bus technology and rapid recharging have made an electric bus the clear vehicle of choice. A recent Columbia stu study showed while the upfront purchase costs of electric buses are higher than conventional buses, prices are offset by savings in fuel and maintenance, maintenance costs of the lifetime of the bus. Additionally, buses are carbon neutral at the point of operation, making this the best choice for Staten Island BRT. Beyond the basic BRT features, which ensure efficient service, efficient service operations and a reliable service for customers, the MTA could consider adding innovative design to increase sustainability. The North Shore BRT can use power from on-site solar PV panels, lowering operating costs. London's transportation network has been using solar energy to power some of its bus stations for nearly 10 years. The Vauxhall bus station in London installed 168 solar PV units and has the ability to generate up to 32.4 kilowatts of energy. To increase sustainability of the stations, MTA could consider passive design techniques, which eliminate the high operational costs of heating and cooling while maximizing the usage of natural airflow and shading. The open station design from Pereira, Colombia features an adaptable option in that it offers shading from the sun and coverage from the rain, and when customers need added protection from the elements, the foldable louvers inside the walls can be folded down. In addition, vegetation above the station could be planted to absorb heat and moisture, providing further cooling. The city of Philadelphia has installed some green roofs on some of its bus shelters, as seen in this photo. Here we have the Emerald Express Green Line in Eugene, Oregon. They incorporated a bioswale into their Springfield station out of an environmental consideration to improve water quality in the area as the water drains into the Willamette River that's north of the station. The bioswale doubles as a rock sculpture garden featuring glasswork by a local artist. Adding this kind of integrated design benefits the North Shore by providing a nat necessary natural environmental infrastructure benefit and also serves as creating an opportunity for a local artist. Further emissions reductions can, um, and positive health impacts can be achieved by integrating the North Shore BRT with bicycle infrastructure, such as adjacent bike paths, um, bike parking, and including bike share stations. In 2011, Wangzhou, China won ITDB's Sustainable Transport Award for integrating their new BRT with bike lanes and the bike share program. Including cycling facilities in Staten Island not only improves public health and increases the BRT sustainability, but it also will help the city reach its goals of doubling cycling by 2020. Because of the right of way's close proximity to the shoreline, and because parts of it are in the floodplain, the BRT must be able to withstand occasional flooding. One option for resilience is to build slop sloping revetments that will protect the coast and the BRT's roadway from the direct force of water from storm surge. A second option is to build the BRT route on concrete pilings to create an esplanade. Instead of trying to keep storm surge out, the BRT roadway could be engineered to be floodable because this is the most cost-effective strategy. In addition, green infrastructure can be integrated into the full length of the, of the route to improve stormwater management. Cleveland, Ohio's Healthline is the highest rated BRT in North America and is an excellent ex example of how a BRT not only can solve transportation problems but provide environmental and economic benefits. The Healthline ha is having a positive effect on the environment. <coughs> Between 2008 and 2011, the Healthline created approximately 4 million additional transit trips, reduced fuel consumption by 3 million gallons of gasoline from car trips, resulting in a reduction of 30,000 metric tons of carbon emissions. 
The cost of public transit can be quite high, but one advantage to BRT is its relative low cost. The health line cost only $200 million and has been credited with attracting $5.8 billion in development investment. Compared to the extension of the Q train here in Manhattan, where adding three stations cost approximately $4 billion, there are tremendous savings with going with BRT. Lastly, this BRT example has an additional revenue stream. Cleveland's RTA was the first transit system in the country to sell naming rights sponsorships. The name is a result of a 25-year $6.25 million sponsorship with two medical centers along the corridor, providing an important revenue stream for the system. This is something for the MTA to consider at a time when federal fund funding is limited. In conclusion, New York City has the opportunity now to recycle an out-of-use rail line into a world-class BRT system that is integrated into a new vision for Staten Island's North Shore and that would symbolize the city's commitment to a sustainable and resilient future. With that, I'll say thank you. So, thanks, that was a great presentation. Um, so the, the decision to shift your mode from cars to buses or BRT is also very important. Uh, did your project look at any um, indicators like median income or low or high density of neighborhoods along this um, right of way that might inhibit future utilization of the BRT? Thank you. Um, yeah, we definitely did that. One component of our analysis was looking at in one of the arguments for BRT is its relative, I mean, its low cost as compared to the burden of car ownership. Um, we also projected um, the cost savings for folks switching, not only in the, the time being saved, but the cost of um, the comparison between car ownership and BRT. Other questions for Beth? 